I am Colin Hurowitz. And I'm Ariel Hicks. And you're listening to WITZ, -E, the, the Wits. Wits. The one place for all things music right here in Douglas County, Oregon. Today's recording is brought to you by... 10 Down Bowling Splits Bar and Grill. Bowling Arcade, an outstanding bar and grill. Really, check out their pizzas. And this recording is also brought to you by the Gene Bechtel School for Music. Check out Gene Bechtel, excuse me, check out BechtelSchool.com, B-E-C-H-T-E-L, school.com. Sign up for lessons. We have voice, piano, strings, percussion, winds and brats. We are accepting students from pre-K to adults. They like to say to 99, and I'm like, wow, my, leaving my 100-year-old friends out. Wow, 100-year-olds, 101-year-olds, we love you. You can come on and see us. Mm -hmm. It's not too late. And of course, scholarships are now available Thanks to the Douglas County Music Association, but we'll talk about that later. Spider King Studios. SpiderKingStudios.com for commercials, recordings, and film. And if you haven't figured this out by now, they're helping us by recording us. Hey, so thank, thank you, you, Spider King. <laughs> if you haven't been to the Spider King Studios website, you gotta go check out their store. The Spider <laughs> King Studios, they got a little, new little critter. This cute little spider. They got a new little <laughs> spider king, and he's so cute. And you got a little coaster, and you got coffee mugs, and you got shirts and tees. Guys, go check out Spider King Studios' amazing store. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, the Douglas County Music Association. Check us out. We have scholarships available. We also have performance opportunities for professional and amateur musicians. And last but not least, we have aid for students. Instruments, lessons, studio space, whatever you need. Contact us at oregondcma at gmail.com. Now, here's the cool thing. I want everyone to know this. Mm -hmm. If everyone gave $10, it's not asking a lot. And I'm only asking for the whole year. Uh, many businesses and personal friends of ours have given a little bit, but if every citizen just in Douglas County and mm -hmm. all the towns Venmoed us 10 bucks, we'd be able to run our program for the next two years. That's so cool. But for some of you who want to give more, $100. Uh, it ensures the scholarships can be made available. $500. Students can have access to instruments and studio space. And $1,000. Ooh, allows us to support UCC students, UACT, UVA and the Douglas County Music Education Program. Now, if anybody wants to give more than that, I, I don't even know what perks we could possibly offer. But we do have perks in a membership program for those tier groups, which we'll talk more about later. Cool. We're still currently working on our website and all kinds of stuff, but we'll, we'll talk about that during the review section of the show. There we go. You can give every month, every few months. Mm -hmm. You can give once a year or make a one-time payment. If you and your business would like to consider making a donation or sponsoring us, you can contact OregonDCMA at gmail.com or you can Venmo us at OregonDCMA. And now it's time for old news. Neil Gregory Johnson Band was live at Orrin Moore. Last Sunday, Neil Gregory Johnson is a cosmic cowboy with a passion for the bar band revival. Woohoo! This music consisted of freewheeling fingerstyle guitar, good time country blues arrangements, passionate vocals, and meaningful lyrics. Did you catch the charismatic storyteller? That is a honky tonk force. If you did, tell us. And we want to get him on the program. So, Neil, love to have you. Yeah. Maybe we'll call you. We'll see. We'd love to have you on the show. <laughs> John Underwood came back to North 40 on Tuesday, January 24th. John Underwood is a multi-instrumentalist solo artist with 10 instruments around himself that are all running in a loop pedal. Mm. Yeah. He mm. creates a full folk klezmer pirate band live in front of an audience, layer by layer. And we talked last week about Jewish klezmer music. Yeah. Check it out. K-L-E-Z-M-E-R. Jewish klezmer music. It's amazing. There was Midnight Roar at Workman's Bar and Smokehouse in Winston. It happened Saturday from 8 to midnight. Were you there? Do you I, remember? I didn't go to that, but uh, I hope it was great. I think my friend Michael Aponte plays in that group. Ooh. And we'd love to have that group on the show, too. Yeah. All you guys, if you've not been on the show, get on here. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Bob Hall, Two Shy Brewery, invited him back for another acoustic music show last Wednesday night, January the 25th. Nice. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, for this one, now I found this out a little too late. This is literally happening as we're recording this Ooh. broadcast. Uh, the Roseburg Public Schools, they had a honor band at Fremont uh, Middle School, and they have this big honor band event that's at Douglas High School in Winston. Uh, there were directors from band programs throughout Douglas County that all came together to rehearse these middle school kids, and I did honor band when I was a kid. It's Ooh. a really, really special thing for young, talented musicians, and I really wish I had known about it sooner, because I, maybe I could have had time to go or sent a team or whatever. So really, <laughs> really excited that honor band is back up and running. Really appreciate all of the people involved. It looks like here, a Fremont band director, Carolyn Soffer, she says, I'm glad both Rosemary 
Hanover Middle Schools were invited this year to give students this opportunity. Not only does it allow students to be exposed to different music, but it is also a chance to connect more with each other and make different connections with students their age in the area. It's true, a lot of my good friends and allies that I made in my lifetime were in art, theater, music, or some kind of performance avenue. All of my good yeah. friends, in fact, I would say most of my good friends are all in performance <laughs> or some kind of artistic expression. <laughs> I think I have a few friends that are not musicians, or at least don't play music, but I can't. Or they don't admit to it. Or they don't admit, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's Musicians, we all get along. Yeah. The concert was free da -da -da. at 7 p.m. Woo! 7.45 right now, so hope it's going great. Yeah. Really appreciate the middle school honor bands. Mm -hmm. And now it's time for some reviews. I know you're all mad at me because I haven't reviewed anything in a while. I want to review DCMA because this is really important to me and I want to send this message home to all of our listeners and viewers. Uh, first, I'd actually like to humbly apologize for the issues last week. Uh, mm. The issues not only resulted in a lesser amount of folks watching, but we were also, because of the delay in the posting, not everybody got to see it. And then of course the new avenue, uploading to YouTube, which seemed obviously kind of new. What we had already been doing was uploading videos straight to Facebook, mm -hmm. but our last video was 51 minutes in length. And and due to several uploading issues, which, look, I get it, I get it. Uploading issues, they do happen. Mm -hmm. And especially now the thing is, I haven't been in my classroom trying to upload videos to YouTube for class 30 minutes before class started. Ooh. I got lucky. But this, Ooh. these kind of projects take a little bit more investment. I didn't expect the video to A, be that long, and B, be so demanding on our system. So I do apologize for the late broadcast, but it's nobody's fault. It just happens. We try to make sure recordings are available Thursday evenings so you can get ready for the weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to be moving away from Facebook. Not yet. One thing at a time. Mm -hmm. But the order Oregon DCMA YouTube channel will become a channel that people can subscribe to. You can also, again, going back the website. Where is the website? We're working on it. Did you know it's hard to build websites? I don't know how to code, so I have to ask someone else to do it, and they are busy, and it's gonna take a while. So once the website is crafted, we're gonna create a membership program. You can sign up, you can receive our newsletter, and you also receive the every weekly show. If you are a member where you pay the fee, you will get a show without advertisements, without all of that stuff. Oh, hey I mean, now. without our advertisers, we wouldn't be able to do very much, so we're grateful to all of you. But if you pay yeah. the membership fee, you'll never guess, it's $10. Hey, $10. One thing at a time, right? But once the website is up and we have that all established, You'll get emailed the show. You can watch it on YouTube. You can upvote or downvote. Hopefully, you upvote, but freedom of speech, right? But we're moving away from Facebook. The membership program, the benefits, our PO box is also being created. I have to go to the post office and talk to them. I know. <laughs> Why haven't you done it by now? Driving's hard, and I'm tired. Drink way too many sodas. Uh, but the idea is overall, the DCMA is alive and running. We have raised over $5,000 hey. from individuals from private companies, from private citizens. Uh, those list of sponsors will be listed. Some people have chosen not to have their names viewed by the public and that's fine. That's fine. We just yeah. want to give our shout outs to the people who really care about us. And so for those of you who've already donated, thank you so much. For those of you who haven't, I'm looking forward to speaking with you soon. As you do your hands. My little, oh. ma little magic spell. <laughs> it's spelling armies. Where's my wound? I left it at somewhere else. Somewhere else. Now check this out. Izzy Trinkle, I know her. Hi, Izzy. At Sunny Slope Elementary, Izzy says, my wonderful students are highly motivated and love learning about instruments. Many of these children want to grow up and play music like their family members, and giving them the tools to succeed is her greatest challenge. Mm. These rock stars will use the instruments in our brand new after school guitar club. There they will learn new repertoire, discover techniques for playing different styles, and experience music as a social program as well as academic study. Afterwards, the instruments will be available for the general school population to learn about one of the most popular instruments ever. And everybody can pull out their air guitar. I mean, I but got one. I mean, like Where's you she? sometimes want to play a real one. I got right? a, I got an air ukulele. Oh, hey. Okay. Mine's much smaller. See? And that's all right. Just extend. Right? And they are actually looking, uh, if you want to go to their Facebook page and donate today, they are looking for people to raise about $900 to buy some new guitars. So if you want to just, hey, give them $5, give them a dollar. Yep. Like, hey, you can do that. And that's going to help them build to that $900 mark. Now, I haven't told Izzy this, and I don't know if she watches the broadcast or not, but the DCMA is already planning to help a little bit. Hey, hey. You can help by donating to the DCMA, but if you directly want your funds to go straight to Ms. Trinkle, I would recommend checking out her Facebook page and donating straight to her program. <laughs> oh, 
I love air, and yeah. Air guitars what? are fun. I nailed it. Yep. Uh, the DCMA scholarship application is now available and we already have one submission. I know, fancy. Remember Yay. that scholarships are pretty inexpensive for that's small amounts, but we do want to help. All you have to do is go to our Facebook page and check out that scholarship application under the files tab, click files. The scholarship application is right there. Fill it out to the best of your ability. Make Ooh. sure you fill out that essay part because if you don't fill out the essay part, you are not qualified. Oh, it is important to us that out. you explain why you need the money and if you're in need. Again, if you're able to take yourself to your happy places, then go. But if you need our help, we really want to help those in need. Yeah. It's not. We're not trying to... We don't want people to take advantage of a special offer just because it's you know something nice that we can do. We really want to help those in need, but we're not going to start turning people away you know, the first day we're open. So consider <laughs> filling out a scholarship application and applying today. Well, also fill out that application completely. Right. That's the main thing, right. is fill it out completely. Yeah, it's really important. And speaking about applications, the applications are open for the 54th Annual Summer Arts Festival. I've gone to it twice. It's very, very fun. Really? Um, yeah, nice. they are seeking art vendors, food vendors, entertainment, community, nonprofit organizations. Hey. And you can click more at the uvarts.com, and then there's Summer Arts Festival. Yep. Um, starting January 15th, so it's uh, hmm, almost February, mm. and actually it will be February when people see this. Yep. So yeah, you can apply today. You can apply by April 1st to get the early bird pricing, which is fantastic. They're looking forward to seeing everyone for our best festival yet, and the moment to celebrate arts, culture, and community. One of my favorite things to talk about is bands that my friends are in. And now I'm going to talk about Widespread Haze. I don't know why I keep saying it that way. Seems fitting. The Roseburg <laughs> rock and roll trio known as Widespread Haze shot a scene for a music video in downtown parking garage on Sunday, January the 29th. So that was just a few days ago. Yeah. With the help of the Roseburg indie filmmakers, Hillside Films, and I know what you're thinking, Hillside Films, Aren't they at war with Spider King? No, they're actually all really good friends. It's really nice to have two film studios in town. It's not a monarch, right? It's not a monopoly. We're happy to have other people in town doing different things. And the fact that we all get along, that's really special. We want to make sure that we all have a good friendship so we can make stuff together. Band members include Christy Reifenbark, Tommy Whiteside, and Matthew Campbell. And they are featured in a Volkswagen Beetle for an action type movie video. We have a kind of 80s lethal weapon narrative that we're working on. The parking garage was the perfect place for a getaway scene, said Reifenbark on the phone Friday. We're excited about this project. We've been able to do all our location shoots here in downtown. Mm, downtown Roseburg is very, what's the word I'm looking for? I mean, it, it almost looks like the same way it did 80 years ago. It it's looks timeless. Like rustic, yeah, timeless. timeless. <laughs> I like, yes, very, very good. The Wild Roll, the, woo. <laughs> <laughs> the Wild Rose Saloon and the band's own Wayback Recording Studio are other downtown filming locations used for the music video, which is expected to be released as early as February by Hillside Films, run by Joshua Roderick. And don't forget Jake Tranter, who owns Spider King Studios. Yep. He's also helping shoot these videos. Mm -hmm. Again, this is what I was talking about, all of our friends getting together and making some really Really cool stuff. Yeah. Really proud of these guys for getting together and making some good work. Mm -hmm. The band will host a video release party. I wasn't invited. I'm just kidding. Hey, 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 I don't hey, know hey, what hey. it is. The party's gonna be in late February or early March. The <laughs> video will be posted to YouTube and the band's website. Widespreadhaze.com. Dot com. Just kidding, I've, I've been in, I was just joking, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just joking, I'm sorry. It's all good. <laughs> all right. And don't forget. Positive Open Mic in Roseburg, Oregon this is the second Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. at the Umpqua Unitarian Universalist Congregation in Roseburg. I found out where that is, by the way. Yeah? I accidentally drove by. It's in the Hughcrest area. Oh. No, I was um, I was exploring because I'm going to go caroling again next year. And I was just like, nur, nur, nur. and there it is. Umpqua Unitarian. I'm like, oh, it's like you see the sign, but then you don't see the building. Oh. So you like kind of see a driveway, and it's like the driveway leads to the building okay. that's kind of like into the neighborhood. So if you can't find this place, look for the sign, check out the Hughcrest area, do a map quest. Or, map quest? Map quest, wow. Wow. Hey, where uh, are you? What time are you dating dating myself? What year? Am I dating myself? <laughs> wow, hi. 1998 call. They want their internet back. Uh, Google Maps, check that out today. Yeah, GPS. Sorry about that. Uh, Sunnyside Theater is opening their stage every Tuesday from 6 to 10 mm -hmm. to poets, singers, songwriters, comedians, and more. But not magicians, I guess. You can sure, take the stage if you want. I'm sure they're fine. <laughs> Drapers in downtown Roseburg has an open mic every Thursday night, 6 to 10. 
so you can warm up and then do it again. <laughs> Tickets are now on sale for UAC's next musical comedy, A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. Murder. Playing February 2nd and through the 19th. A Gentleman's Guide tells the uproarious story of Monty Navarro, a low-born fellow who, upon learning of his mother's death, finds out he is a distant heir to a family fortune and sets out to jump the line of succession by hmm? eliminating the eight unsuspecting relatives. Dun, dun, dun. All played by one fearless performer nice. who stands in his way. Can he knock off his pesky relatives without being caught and become the ninth Earl of Highhurst? And... What of love? Because murder is not the only thing on Monty's mind. Mm. Mm. Spicy. Yeah, if that sounds intriguing, you can go to uacttheater.com or dial, yeah, there we go, dial 541-673-2125 to get tickets, and they are $15 each. This production is recommended for audience ages 13 and up. And just curious, if you've got a rotary phone, you're cool. Yeah. If you still have a rotary phone that still works, Hello, you act. You're amazing. Thanks for having a rotary phone. <laughs> Coming up. Spider King Studios. Auditions are being held for the next major project, Killer Roommate, which will be a dark comedy feature-length film. Three friends living in the city with a carefree lifestyle, <gasps> but their world is turned upside down in a desperate attempt to protect themselves and the reputations they make the fateful decision. As they struggle to keep their secret, they find themselves caught in a dangerous game of cat and mouse with both the police and a ruthless serial killer who is hunting for victims in the city. With the stakes getting higher and higher with each passing day, they must race against time to outsmart their adversaries and avoid getting caught before it's too late. Please be advised that Spider King would like to start rehearsing right away, which will lead into production within the month of February. These guys move fast. It's kind of amazing. They shot, what, Trial by Fire in 13 days? That is that is insane. Usually, I mean, go to Wingnut. How long did it take to make Lord of the Rings? Like five years? <laughs> 13 days, five years? It's, it's quite, that's quite a leap. Auditions will be held on Friday, February 3rd, and Saturday, February 4th at 6 p.m. at here at the Gene Bechtel School for Music at <laughs> 1622 Northeast Vine Street. And please come prepared, kill a roommate. I'll be auditioning. Are you auditioning? Yeah, I'll be there. I hope I get some kind of cool part where I sell an ATV to a guy. It's going to be great. <laughs> the UCC Performing and Visual Arts present pianist Jaron Cannon in concert, solo classical repertoire, piano improvisations, and original compositions. Join us at the Whipple Fine Arts Center February 3rd, 7 p.m., Admission is 10, but if you're a student or staff, it is free. And I said this last time, but the Whipple Fine Arts Center is at the Woolley Center next to the Betty Unruh Theater where you act hosts. So if you're not really sure where that is, go to that area where the Betty Unruh Theater is or the Woolley Center mm -hmm. and take a look around. You'll find it. It's the Art Center right here in Roseburg. Nice. Now I have some fun. <laughs> I know. I know. Every week for the last four weeks, I was like, Professor Faith, February 4th. Yeah. I got nothing. Sunnyside Theater. Hey, somebody actually posted something on the Facebook page. So, Professor Fate, and this is what I wrote down, take it with a grain of salt. You know, not that I encourage salt drinking of any kind. Uh, it is a four-piece band, guitars, bass, and drums, that dress in eclectic styles and seem wildly unpredictable. Fancy costumes, steampunk accessories, and instruments that look custom made. Yeah, these instruments look real fancy. And these guys look like they've been touring for quite a while. Ooh. It looks like a very eccentric show. I would check it out. And that'll be this Saturday, February 4th at 7 p.m. I said Sunday Side Theater, right? I did. Oh, good. I'm glad you, one of us is paying attention. <laughs> I That's... did. All right. Colleen Roberts says, hey, everyone. I'll be over on the coast performing at Two Shy Brewing in Reedsport mm. on Saturday, February 18th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. If you're in the area that weekend, pop in, say hello, have a beer. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing the new location in Reedsport and spending some time on the coast. Mm -hmm. Thank you to Shy Brewing for this opportunity. We've already had several of our musical friends and allies play out there. We have yeah. Bass for Radio is actually going mm -hmm. out there. I didn't put it in this week's broadcast, but Bass for Radio, that our, uh, our guest from last week is going out yeah. there. Uh, my friend, our old teacher here, Tori Rose, even played a show out there. Uh, Colleen Roberts is a good friend of mine. We sing together in church. Uh, I played for her group briefly. 
Uh, but I, I told them I was expensive and it's hard to, it's hard to afford me. And I got stuff going on and I, every time I play for a group for free, my wife gets very mad at me. So uh, just being up front with the group and my costs and it's a little too expensive. And, and But the thing is, we might actually have Colleen's band on our show Ooh, yes. the week of the 25th because they're playing a two shy. We'll talk about that later. Yay. Colleen Roberts, a great singer, excellent guitarist. Mm -hmm. And now our feature presentation. <laughs> Now, before we actually get to our interview, we're going to show you a brief video. Now, during the pando, the pandemic, uh, I actually, in order to keep my job, I had to be pretty proactive. A lot of music teachers had to go on Zoom and do this and do oh, that. Oh, yes, Zoom. But what I did, it was March of 2020, and I remember sitting in my chair going, how am I going to keep my job? I got to mm. show these guys that I'm, real, I'm ready to figure this out. I was still on probation at that time. And if you don't know anything about education, probation, all teachers in the state of Oregon have to go a three-year probationary period oh, where wow. they can let you go at any time. Whew. They don't need a reason. For any reason, over your three-year period, they can say, thanks for your service, you're done. Have a nice day. So oh. I was really on edge. How am I going to keep my job? How am I going to demonstrate to the school district that I want to be here? So I made a YouTube channel. I know. I made a YouTube channel of teaching videos for just my kids. You may have already seen my YouTube channel. It's mostly kid stuff. We are going to start incorporating parts of this show called Kids, a little a little kids segment just for kids. Nice. You know, we're going to start adding some of my dance videos, and I'm sure Miss Hicks and I are going to make some stuff together. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's what we do. Yeah, uh, well, we do. I also, Spider King's gonna help me reshoot some of my old videos that I, oh, oh God, I'll tell the story. The, my <laughs> oh jeez, my first videos, Jake's, Jake's got his headphones on, he's gonna laugh really hard. My first videos that I made for my kids, mm -hmm. I put my phone on a music stand. I, hey, you use what you have. That was it, and I was like, this is not gonna work, because it was, the, the camera was like under my belly, looking up at me and it was very unflattering oh. and my, my first videos were just trash i mean the kids were really good sports about it actually one of my videos has like a thousand views but i don't even think it's good i don't know how it got a thousand views and probably but the content you got the content out maybe there. but it's, yeah. it's mostly music from my quaver it's music that i've taken from others i've written very little of my own music i mostly borrow from others but i made a youtube channel and you're gonna check out taylor siling and i actually made a video together we made several but we're only going to show you bits and pieces of the first video that we made for our kids on violin teaching. Ooh. Check it out. Welcome back. So we've learned about brass instruments. We learned about woodwind instruments. We have even had a couple of drum lessons, but there is a whole new instrument we've never done before. So I hope you're excited. Today, we're gonna learn, that's right kids, we're gonna learn one of our favorite stringed instruments, the violin. Let me just get mine for you real quick, cause somewhere over here, let me just. Sorry about that, kids. So, that's right, this is a violin. So let's go through the parts together. So we have our strings, we have our body, we have our F holes, yes, those are Fs, believe it or not, and then of course, our amazing bridge. Now, kids, you tell me, am I playing this right or wrong? Am I doing it wrong? You sure? No, wait a minute, you're right, we need something. We need this. What is this called, kids? If you said stick thingy with strings, you were close. It's actually called echo game, a bow. Now I'm gonna show you exactly how this works. First of all, you hold it like this, and then you put it across like this, and then you just- No, 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 no. Oh. Not even close. You're telling me I don't hold it like this, and bow like, what, what am I doing wrong here? Correct. So the violin actually goes on your shoulder, on your left shoulder. And it doesn't matter if you're right-handed or left-handed, it always goes on the left shoulder. But, 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 but my mom, she told me I was left-handed. You telling me I'm not supposed to use my right hand? Oh no, you are. So you have your left hand there and then with your right hand, you hold the bow. Now do I hold it like this, like a samurai sword? No, you hold it, you get your hand out, make a C, have it, your thumb nice and curved. Let's actually go through the parts of the bow really quickly. Okay. This is called the frog. Mm. This is called the stick, which mm. they were correct. Really? This is called the hair. <laughs> and this is something that we do not touch because our hands get oily and gross and we don't want to um, yeah. take off the rosin, which we'll talk about in a second. <sighs> And then, so what we're going to do, so we're making that C again. 
And we're going to put, for, for children, we start with under the frog, but since you're adult, you don't do that. Ah, so kids, so pay attention, please. You put your thumb, and make sure it's nice and curved. You have your C. Two fingers over the frog, curved pinky, finger over it. Miss Taylor, and that voila. sounds really, really difficult. Are you sure I can do this? Let's hope. Here we go. Let's try so it out. So make a C again. Okay. Okay. Thumb. Oh, wow. Thumb, Thumb goes curve. underneath. Yes. But not under here, right? No, yeah. we want it in between mm -hmm. the strings and the stick. Stick, Nice. Yes. Okay. Then two fingers over. Yep. Then curved pinky, curved pinky, not straight pinky, curved pinky. So if you're a child at home. Like this. And you're trying to get this bowstring figure. Take a look right here. Now, she said a C, right? Outstanding. Thumb goes between the string and the stick. These two fingers go over. Watch Curve. her fix me. Curve. I know you have to get, you have to do workouts with your fingers to get them nice and strong with those joints. Taylor, is this incredibly comfortable or uncomfortable? Oh, it's incredibly with? uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. It will feel so weird. At first, right? At first. And then when you get to play 22 years, it feels very comfortable. Ah, uh, so if this is your first day and it's uncomfortable, that's okay, That's okay. Right? It's going uh, to feel uncomfortable for months. So let me remind, so first of all, I have this attached. What is this called, Miss Taylor? Do you know? It, I do know. It is called a shoulder rest and it actually is removable. <gasps> so if you don't have one of these, you could put one on, right? Yes. You need one of these, you don't you? You need one of these. You need one of these, kids. Whoops. Can I, can I? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. It's just easier to put it on this way, this, so it promotes good posture and it doesn't slide around. So that, that rests literally on your shoulder. On my shoulder. Oh, okay, so when I see kids play violin. In the front, uh, that is incorrect. Not okay. Oh, I it is on to the side. Miss Taylor, I've seen some 18th century fiddlers play like this. Were they wrong? No, because that was the style of their playing. They did not have chin rests nor did they have a shoulder rest. Oh, so without the proper things, you just kind of make do, right? Mm -hmm. Which is why a fiddle is different from a violin. It's not though. They're not? No. They're not different? They're the same instrument. Uh, it's the style of playing. Keep that in mind, kids. Whenever, on, so, whenever somebody says fiddle, they really same. mean this. And the only just... thing that actually changes is the bridge. You change the bridge for a fiddle bridge. Oh, is it and shorter, they, bigger, or longer? Uh, straighter, so you can play chords. So that's you can right. play double stops. How many, raise your hand yeah. if you love country music. Yeah, that's exactly what's in there. Mm -hmm. So this instrument is not only used in classical European literature, it's also used in American folk country. Who would have thought there would have ever been any kind of combination like that? Who would have thunk? I know I didn't, but I wasn't born yet. <laughs> That happens to the best of us. All right, so Miss Taylor's gonna tell me if I'm doing this correctly or not. We've talked about grip. I've got my seat. Thumb between the string and the stick. Oh yeah. Make Two it. fingers over. And then my- Curved thumb, because that's, so that's yeah, a straight curved. thumb. Curved, again, curved. this is not, we don't want this, kids. This is not a C, that's an L. For loser, which none of you are. You're fabulous. But we want a C, so the thumb is curved. And then your first finger, and your pinky finger are also curved while your second and third finger rest over like this. All right, you wonder if I can get some notes out now? Yeah. All right, so I'm just gonna start making some notes. Here we go. Okay, well, my chin probably needs to go on what? The chin rest. Oh, so I have a shoulder rest and a chin rest, for real? Well, this is the most comfortable instrument I've ever played. Mm -hmm. Neat. Okay, so I'm just gonna start playing. Are you ready, kids? Here we go. something else that's wrong here. What, but I got it's, my grip. I have my grip. It's actually the size of your bow. <gasps> so look at the difference. This is a full size, which is what adults play, size of bow. And this is the bow that he was using. It's much smaller. So it's this is actually for a smaller size violin. Oh. You need this bow. Wait, is this a full size violin? Yes, that is the largest violins get. Who gets to use smaller violins? Who does that? Younger children. So young, so younger than twelve, you would think. Yes. Okay. Some some twelve year olds and eleven year olds, depending on how tall they are and how long their arms are, can be on a full size. I did not, but you can. But you start. This is on a full size, and we all know fractions. That it starts um, depending on the size of the child, starting at an eighth size, eighth size, quarter, half, three quarter, 
full. That is a lot more sizes than I expected. And there's a, a 16th, too. What? Who is a 16th? Who plays a 16th violin? Three and four-year-olds. How many of you are three and four? <laughs> If you are not, uh, yeah. then you probably don't right, want a one sixteenth. Yeah, one sixteenth violins will be like this big. Yeah, an, an eighth violin is about this. So yeah, sixteenth literally looks violin. like it. So you're so telling me that yeah. I don't want to buy five violins. I you can, just can rent them. but you can rent them. That would probably save me money. Yes. Now, who do I contact if I want to rent an instrument? Do I contact Mr. Hurwitz? Do I contact you? Who do I call? Who do I need to call? Southweststrings.com. That's that's what the orchestra uses, and I've gotten my instruments a uh, outfit. That's what they call An it. Outfit. Yeah, they call it the outfit with the bow, the case, the violin, and rosin. You, I would say about two hundred dollars would be a a good um, amount because the problem is the stuff that you see online for like sixty, seventy dollars. Those are really not playable. They don't stay in tune. So you're telling me we don't have to spend millions of dollars to just start. We could just no. spend a few hundred bucks and we can get everything mm -hmm. and we can watch this video and we're fine. Or rent for way, way, way cheaper. I like this idea. Again, support your local industries, support local economy. Call either of us if you need to get an instrument and we'll make sure we take good care of you. But now I've got my instrument. Do I have my bow? Here, you told me to have, use a proper have, size. You'll have the real size oh, now. Oh, look how much bigger this, dude, look at that. And it's heavier too. Do, do I need to have these strings tightened or loosened to play? So yes, in order to do that, when you take this out of your case, it needs to be loosened. So the rule of thumb is usually you, in order to tighten it, you turn this turning screw, this right here, three times away from you. One, two, two. three. I'll if count. I turn it towards me, what happens? It, it loosens, gets, it right? It loosens it. Uh, we don't want that. We don't want that. We want that. it tight, got it. So this looks about right. So now you can try that, because now we'll make a much better sound on those strings. Let's check our technique again. So our C is curved, which means thumb our thumb curved. is curved. These two fingers go over, thumb and then curved. our yeah. pinky and our forefinger. Again, let our expert take care of us. Okay. So we're gonna play together, and we're gonna make sure that my violin is sounding like hers. Our violin. I'm putting my yeah. Take a look. shoulder rest because you never leave your shoulder rest on your instrument because when you close the case, this makes it a lot higher and it's gonna crush everything. So I want you to play your open A string. Uh, there's four strings here, Miss Taylor. There is. How do I know? So you have go. You can go to your thinnest string, the tiniest string. Ooh. That is your E. E. So that is a little sharp. Ooh, so what really? we're going to do is that I'm going to take, these are fine tuners. Show them where? Where are they? I do not have them on mine. Oh, so these these, these are the big tuners, right? And we don't, we don't, don't touch, touch those. We don't touch these unless we really need to. That's what These we are our micro tune. tuners. Outstanding. So. Let's play each of our strings together. You tell so, me if it's uh, good or not. E. I do not sound good, class. Again, look how she's holding that instrument, class. Is she holding it like this, trying to tune? No, she's putting it down here. I don't want this to here. fall. Yeah. I'm having a whole this, because this is very, very delicate. So, the bridge, it's outstanding. Uh, you told us that this bridge is not glued Correct. to the bar. Ah, so if the strings came off, the bridge falls over, yes. and then we need to have someone refit it for us. If our bridge breaks, we absolutely need to get a new one. Mm -hmm. You call your teacher, you go to Southwest Strings. Yes. One or the other, again, it, you know what, between you and me, me and you, it would be better if you didn't just go buy stuff. Yeah. It would be better if you didn't just go buy stuff. If you talk to us, we'll make sure you get what you need so you don't buy the wrong thing. There's different types of bridges. That's why. So, all right, it's about time that I started playing this thing and sounding yes. good. Now, we were able, were we able to tune this? Yes. Should we check our pitches? Yeah, oh, here's your bow. Didn't. Why is mine shaking so much, Miss Taylor? Because it's your, it's, it's your bow. Ah. Uh. Mm-hmm. So I didn't shake that time. Mm -hmm. Ah, outstanding. Okay, and then A. Do you hear that crunch at the very beginning? Am I doing that? 
Yes. Am I doing that? Yes. How do I get rid of that? Well, you can start just a little bit higher up in your bow. Also, you have oh. all this weight in your hand. So when you are playing at the very end, which is called towards the frog, you get that crunchiness. If you just don't start. Ah, so I don't want to start all the way up here. Down. I want to start about three yeah. inches away from that. So if I ever showed you to start up here, obviously I was wrong about that. So start a little bit down here. Oh, that's yeah, much, much better. better. Instead of hearing this, ah! But again, we don't want to play two strings at once. We only want to play one string. That's something else later. <laughs> All right, let's keep moving. Okay, and then D, open D. Ooh, is that my second to lowest string? Yes. Ah. Okay, and then G. Ooh. So wait, I don't want to start at the very tip either. I don't want to start off. Ah, so almost like mm -hmm. three inches here or three inches here. Mm -hmm. Ah, very wanna good. Want to play more from the, oh, sorry, this part of your bow to this part. This is where you're going to get the best sound. Ah, so if I were to just start, I would only want to practice playing one string at a time. Correct. Only using these parts of the bow. Okay, do you have an exercise that we should well, start today? Well, first, I have, an, I have another thing that I want. No, 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 you, you put that ah. out there. Everything is great, but the one thing that we have to work on is your left hand. Oh. So your left hand was kind of like chilling right there. Ah. What actually has to happen is it has to come out, and it's what we call wrist out. So your wrist in would be like that, and we don't want that. Wrist out, it's like if you're waving at yourself, there's all of that. Also, can I see this for a second? Yeah, of course. On his violin, I have put these lines here to show where you put your fingers. And either have you have your teacher or me put them on. Don't just try to guess. Because mm. it's a little bit different on each violin, the placement. Ah. So the main thing is that you will have your thumb, your left hand thumb, across from this first finger tape. That's what this is. First finger, second finger, Third finger. We're gonna use First, three fingers today. Just three fingers. Your okay. your pinky's not your pinky's just chilling up here. It's right. not back here, but it's still there. One, two, three. So your thumb is across from the first finger tape. That uh, was the main thing that I wanted. Let's make sure I can get this right. So I'm looking at this. I see. Now, if you don't have these markings at home, that's okay. Um, it's okay to guess for now. At least eyeball it. But yeah. it's more important that you get a proper teacher. So make sure you give one of us a call. We can set you up. So you got my thumb opposite of my first little line there, and my wrist needs to be out. out. This Is this also uncomfortable when you start? Yes, it's very uncomfortable. You're going to feel really tired in this arm area. This is not gonna be comfortable. And the other thing is, same idea with the C fingers, curved fingers. So there, so you can get right on the tips. I'm gonna put you on A. Right on the tips of your fingers. Not straight like this, right on the tip. So and so yeah, and so I want you to like it's good to practice it, even though you're not gonna be putting any fingers down for a while, to get used to how this feels. And I know it's very uncomfortable. No, I know what you're thinking, class. Are y'all like, gonna stop chatting and yatting? Are you gonna start making some music or what? Well, fine. I'm gonna let our guest, Miss Taylor, uh, she's gonna play for us just a little bit to show us exact proper technique. If you don't look like she does, you're probably doing it wrong. Miss Taylor, what do you have for us today? So first what I'm just gonna do, just so you can see what a nice bow stroke is supposed to look like, I'm going to play the D major scale with four quarter notes each. And I want you to look at my wrist in my bow. The other thing, and I know you see me doing this because I can do this, you can't, is that you don't want to have your whole arm moving. It is just from the elbow down. No swinging arms. that you learn once you can play all the open strings you will be learning how to play on your D string and on your A string using your first second and third finger <laughs> Everything was great there. I'm looking at, okay, that little bit 
No, it doesn't need to be quiet. Yes. And then you also want to have... Oh, good. You do have space. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I really like is that you are watching your bow and where your bow is in between the fingerboard and bridge because that's very important right now you need to be able to watch your bow make sure that it's going straight it's not going wonky all this way we and don't want X's right mm -hmm. we don't want X's we want plus signs we want perpendicular motion yes cool Yes. So, Miss Taylor, would you like to play something fun for us now? Yes. That was I a can. great starting point for anybody beginning, but yes. I bet all of you at home would like to hear a piece of music from an amazing violin player. <laughs> That's just the first part of Humoresque by Dvorak. It is my distinct honor and privilege to welcome Miss Taylor Siling to the program. Taylor, welcome. Hi. Now, for our audience who may not know who Taylor is, would you please introduce yourself and the things you do? Yes. So, first, I am the music teacher at Fir Grove Elementary. Uh -huh. And then I also have an after school choir at Fir Grove Elementary that I started this year. And then on Tuesday evenings, I teach at the Douglas County Youth Orchestra, and we meet at Phoenix Charter School down mm -hmm. off Diamond Lake. Mm -hmm. And I teach the Prelude class, which is our beginning class, and then I teach and help out with the other two classes and play and lead sectionals as well. With the Douglas County Youth Orchestra, we also have free one private lesson per month per student. Mm -hmm. So it's a way for us to connect with each student and then be able to work on their strengths and weaknesses and make sure that you know they can get the most out of their um, orchestra experience. Mm -hmm. And then we also uh, have the Eugene Symphony come down about, every, not every month, but almost like every other month to work with our students in sectionals as well. So these students are, we're trying to give them the best music education, you know, an after school program can do. It's funny because actually you bringing that up reminds me of this last summer where I actually got to do a petting zoo with you guys when you yeah. did your summer show and I got to work with the Eugene Symphony. At the half shell. Yeah, that's right. And had all these shell. instruments mm. out and kids got to come up and touch the stuff and play a violin. And we actually and... got a couple students from that where you were like, oh, well, Taylor is the one that knows more about violin. And then we had students come over like, oh, I'm really interested in learning this. And then that's when I literally really sites them there going and then gave them their uh, paperwork to register. Now you already saw the video that was right before this interview but Taylor taught me how to play a violin and the only reason I even know how to hold the thing and show anybody how to pick it up is because of Taylor and the funny thing is and I don't think we've talked about this yet but how we met was really fascinating so uh, mm -hmm. Jason Heald and I have known each other for a long time oh, yeah. and Jason okay. Heald asks me to come play timpani what was the name of that group that came out was it like three three legged Torso. Yeah, oh, yeah. Was, I mean, you oh. can't forget a name. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, and it, we're not making this up. A three-legged torso comes to yeah. Roseburg, and Clint Newell's there, and I'm there. We're playing, and after the end of a rehearsal, I just met Taylor randomly, and I was just... Because you were behind me. Yeah, and we just talked were... for like eight seconds, and I had her business card, and I was I just called Taylor, and I'm like, could you come help me teach violin? Oh. And she came all the way over to the school. Mm -hmm. I think I gave you a few bucks for doing that. I really, you know, it was really... Mm -hmm. I pay people to do stuff, it's true. But uh, Taylor came all the way out and she taught me how to thing. And the thing is, I can now actually hold the instrument and I can actually play now. And I don't sound terrible. <laughs> so I really, go. I really, so Yay. a great teacher. And you actually left out an important detail. Taylor is also a member of our board oh, for the DCMA. Yeah. Can you talk about your experiences with that so far, being a board member? That mm. I haven't had a lot of experience because it's, it's pretty new, it's in its infancy. But what I already heard, because you had posted about it, is that we're already able to help 
children in Douglas County receive funds for renting instruments and for uh, receiving private lessons. I wasn't going to tell anybody until now, but we've already raised over five thousand. Wow! No way! We I, are ready. I didn't know it was that high. It, there it, we go. That it can is high. That's, we're yeah. doing good, and the thing is, it's thanks to people like you yes. that have helped us help others. We already have a student applicant who's looking to do some special stuff, and we have some other students from the high schools that are looking to go to camps, and of course, good, a big good, announcement good. that I'll, I've already announced earlier in the show. But we are trying to focus some UG musicians to come all the way down here and put on a massive show, an oh. hour and a half long performance. Details still to come, but stay tuned. Taylor, Ooh. now you said you're working with the Douglas County Youth, Youth, Orchestra. Youth Orchestra. Can you talk a little bit more about that and the things you do? And the things I do in uh, yes. GCYO. Yeah, because it sounds like that's a huge part of your time. Yes. Well, and it's been a huge part of my life since I've been... Seven? Eight? No way! So, oh, wow. So I used to be part of it, and then I made my way, you know, through the levels, and then I came back years later with a music education degree and, you know, obviously the years of playing as where well. Did, where did you go? I went to Oregon State, mm -hmm. but before <laughs> that, I uh, went to UCC and I was part of the Umqua Singers, and that got me prepared to... Uh, you were in Umqua Singers? Yeah. Hey, how about that? Yeah. That's so cool. I did not know that. Hey. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Wow. 2010 to 2013. Uh, we actually had a show where we interviewed them. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That was one of our first there's videos. Some, there's yeah. some stuff on YouTube from Baby Taylor. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, when I mean baby, I mean like 19 years old. They so got yeah. Taylor yeah. as a baby <laughs> yeah, no. in the Umqua Singers. <laughs> yeah. That's no. fantastic. <laughs> no. <laughs> Search Umqua Singers Taylor <laughs> Silence. Yeah, see what I was comes like, up. I was. Oh. I, I'm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, all, all the. Oh, so I'll talk about the um, Douglas County Youth Orchestra. Yeah. Okay. So starting in April, we're going to start uh, taking applicants. And when I say applicants, I don't mean that there's a vetting process. Anybody is welcome. And even though it's called the Douglas County Ooh. Youth Orchestra, we have many adults play. We actually kind oh. of encourage, especially in the beginning, to have parents or guardians or grandparents to play with their children. What? Because it usually so cool. helps uh, helps their playing is when you have a uh, adult right next to them playing when yeah. when you are when you're young. Oh yeah. my And gosh, then so cool. uh, so we are going to be doing that, and uh, then we will start again uh, in September. But we have this week off right now, so then we're going to come back uh, next week, and then we will have a concert at the end of May. At Phoenix School, and then that will be it for our, our Douglas County Youth Orchestra season. And then uh, we will come back in September and start all over again. And we have a concert in January, and we have a concert in May. Now, I have to humbly apologize because I missed your most recent concert. Uh, there was a split. There's two different youth symphonies at two different locations, and I had students in both programs. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, I did make a mention on my last broadcast about, we, you know, having the same kind of music at the same time seems strange to me. I don't know how we can fix it, but it'd be interesting to go to one and then the other, or one on one day and one on a different day. Like, but. if they just had separate days yeah or because even, you yeah. guys probably prepare the same like number uh of days in a season and so yeah. you're like these kids are ready for We're all at the same time well and it's also around the same time that band and choir are having concerts as right. well ah. like at the high school and the middle school so it's like we're all having concerts around the same time and it's hard to figure out yeah. how to make sure nobody's stepping I mean, because it's interesting because it's not on the broadcast because it's happening literally right now <laughs> uh, but there is a concert happening right now that is the junior high school honor band i made a post on Facebook, oh, I yeah. saw, and I, saw. I didn't even hear about okay. that until like Sunday. So oh, I heard about I, it yesterday. I couldn't plan for that. And I, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't send a team to go over there and investigate. So anyway, yeah, it was just I. I am sorry I didn't go. I really wanted to go, but when you, I have to choose between two groups, and I got students and friends in yeah. both. I, I just basically couldn't. Well, I, you, I couldn't can, make you can decision. catch that. You can catch the next one. Yeah. In fact, so, hopefully by then we have two teams. Whoa. Yeah. So if they can't figure it out, hopefully they do. We can send one team to one and one team to the other, and we'll cover the whole thing. It'll be fabulous. Yes. So, yeah, also ahead. part, so I teach the prelude class, which is mm -hmm. our beginning class. And when I mean beginning, I mean people that have never played a musical instrument, never played a, a string instrument, never read music. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, it is always helpful to have a little bit of musical background, but it is definitely not necessary. Mm -hmm. Most of the students that I have this year did not read music at all before starting DCYO. And then we were able to, at the, our last concert, play songs all in D major uh, using the D and the A string. So from going from 
I don't know how to open the case to we're actually playing songs. So, Ooh. and that was just from September to January. Now, um, with this, okay. with the script that you're playing, um, are you are you actively teaching the students yourself, or are you mostly conducting the group, or are you just playing in the group? All of that. So, wow. especially at okay. the beginning, because I have found out you don't want to just talk at the kids just the entire time. Do it, show it to them. Yes. So with me and also will build their confidence if i play with them then they know what it should sound like so i usually play with them a little bit and then once i see that they're starting to be like okay they got this i will put my um, instrument down and then i will conduct so then they're working on listening to me and mm. then they'll be working on work you know and we had to go over conducting what does that mean how do you follow that because i told them i said I'm playing with you now, but as we continue going on, I want to play less and less and have it be more about you. I will obviously play with you when mm -hmm. we learn a new concept or how I want it to sound. But for the most part, I try to have them play and me conduct and then obviously me stopping them, giving them pointers, trying it again. Uh, I also give them extra music out of like other than just the book because I don't think the book has everything that it needs. There you go. Then so and also every class is different. Mm -hmm. So maybe this class needs a little bit more work with these notes or these notes. So I last year wrote a couple pieces, just like really easy little, you know, pieces for them exactly for where they were at. Nice. So that's cool. the great thing about doing that. And I, I, that's what I get to be creative and then I yeah. get to hear it Ooh. in front of me. So like, uh, we did that for, uh, our May concert last year Ooh. because I was like, I didn't really like the songs that were in the book. There's like five that are like the same one that are in all the method books. And I was like, something new, something, something new, new, please. <laughs> and so I was like, you know what? I'll just do it. Uh, yeah. And absolutely. then, yeah. and then I go, absolutely. Oh, and it was so nice not listening, you know, to go tell Aunt Rhody and you know, <laughs> <laughs> Mary had a little lamb. Who's Aunt Rhody? You know, Who I is just, this? I just didn't, we needed a break from that. So yep. I wanted to actually do something new and different. So that is the class that I teach, Prelude. And then after that, there is Concert Orchestra, which is our middle group. And then there is Philharmonic Orchestra, which is our top group, which is our third group. Woo! <laughs> dag, dag, dag nabbit. Uh, so how many kids are in your program, do you think? Oh, don't quote me on this. Because uh, I know, I know. I can't quote you, you're saying it. You're quoting yourself, man. I mean, I mean, like, don't <laughs> don't write it down. Don't write it down. And, and, and you forgot this an one. An estimate, that one. like, an what's estimate, your estimate? I mean, like, uh, about about sixty. Because I'm thinking about that, and then plus, That's great. you know, like parents and everything. Yeah. Well, and with COVID, you know, obviously, when when we weren't meeting together, we did meet over Zoom. Obviously, Ooh, that was Zoom, we, were, yes. we had to be, you know, um, uh, muted. But we were still playing together, and then we were also recording ourselves nice. and then sending it in mm, cool. and then we were also doing private lessons via zoom so then at least even though we weren't able to be together mm -hmm. i was we were also able to at least help these kids get a little bit farther because they i would be able to listen to them i would be able to play they would play we can have a conversation right there and it, so we're just we were building back the um the program from COVID, and you know i have like 20 in my first group so is it pretty easy to join the group or is it really complicated and expensive it's, or no it's very Ooh. easy that's a good question it's very easy all you need to do is uh call and you can just go online to like douglas county uh youth orchestra uh the there'll be a link in the video description you can check that out and you'll talk to Kathy Halloran, who is the administrator, and then she'll get you uh, squared away with like what kind of instrument is your student uh, interested in playing. And also, we only do string instruments, so there is no band instruments that we do. So it's just the, the instruments to choose yeah. from. Because we do get some parents that are like, oh, we just moved here, and my student plays the flute or wants to play the flute. And we're like, we're not a symphony. We just teach strings. Mm -hmm. And that consists of violin, viola, cello, and double bass. Those are our four instruments that uh, we start you on. If you do have Ooh. a wind player in your family or a percussionist or a string player or a guitar player, uh, please contact OregonDCMA at gmail.com. 
I've got programs for those wind kids, those percussion kids, and those guitar kids. We can set them where they need to go. I know, guitar and orchestra, what? I think it'd be possible, but I understand well, that. Well, there's classical guitar, too. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that was that, like, there's yeah. plenty of music for classical guitar. And that's kind of, that's why we're doing this show, is we're talking about all the local stuff, and Taylor, obviously, is doing a lot of different things. Now, yeah. just briefly, and I know you've got some questions, too. Now, briefly, <laughs> can you please talk about your public teaching experience? Like, the best parts, the worst parts? Yeah. How, because you're, you're, you obvi it sounds to me like you're very passionate about the DCYO. Are you also passionate about your elementary school yes. teaching? So the reason why I even started the choir this year, well, first of all, so when we were in COVID, we weren't, you know, allowed to sing. Mm. So there was that. So, and I was just like, no, I love, you know, I, that's what I went to school for. I love teaching choir and I love orchestra as well. But I was like, this will be perfect. And I was really excited to start an elementary choir and then COVID mm. hit. And I'm like, well, I guess not. Mm. And then with the whole mass thing and it's like, you can't be breathing in and out, in and out. And I'm not saying like with just a singer's mass. And I looked into singer's mass and I was like, oh my gosh, $25, $30 a person for a singer's mask. And you look like Darwin Duck. Like you, <laughs> it, 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 it's a look. It's, it's, it's not a look I was thinking I, I wanted it. to do. Yeah. I don't think they wanted to do it either. They would have looked like Huey, Dewey, and Louie. It would have been a whole Can you guys do the Donald Duck impersonation? Can anyone do a Donald Duck? No. Oh my God, Voice no. Actress? No. I can't. I can't. Yeah, no, yes, I, you remember the, do you, okay, do you remember the chamber pods for band class? Like, they have, they bought, some high schools like would buy these chambers for individual musicians and they would all get like their own little weird tent to play music in. Do you remember that? <laughs> you know, oh, <laughs> oh, I heard about that. First I thought you meant when we were in school. I'm oh, like, no, 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 yeah, during the, yeah, yeah. It, it looks like a little like tent for like a little chihuahua and they put it like over their head. Yeah. And then all of it just oh. went out the bottom. So some, I'm like, I'm Some not very playing. strange, yeah. innovative technology. They, to they, the they tried, they, they tried. tried. That's so, better than nothing, I guess. I, what were we talking about again? Oh. Uh, we, we digress. Oh, uh, your, your, your mask stuff you're talking about the um, oh, yes, your, the your yeah. elementary school yeah. experience which, so uh yeah. last year or sorry not so i first started uh teaching i taught for a little bit at days creek charter school i taught music that's down right there. so before i, forgot about before I went and got my master's so because i at that point you couldn't you know teach in the schools without that's when we met you were teaching at days mm. creek yeah mm -hmm. so i was teaching band and uh general music and then i went to school and then came back and then this is when i then i was the uh, music teacher at uh melrose and for grove when it was still split between uh schools right and then i got to just teach at uh for grove full-time last year and then this year full-time as well and now we can mm. sing so we had a choir they did a little performance and they said that it has been years since they've had a choir performance um, for their uh, Christmas program. We did two songs uh, and actual uh, choral pieces that nice. like I bought off JW Pepper. So mm. like some real pieces Ooh. and we work on warm ups and mm. we work on vowels and we work on, you know, standing properly and everything that you need to to, you know, to be a good singer and to also help them like fall in love with singing. So then they continue it. It's not saying maybe they need to become a music teacher like me, right. but it can make your middle school and high school life a lot better. I mean, a lot of us you, can attest to that. It, exactly. Where was my safe haven? It mm. was the band, band room class. in middle school. Band class. So it's, I want other kids to have that same exact reason. So if they're having a little bit of a tougher time making friends or just, it's not the same thing. You know who's good, you're going to find a friend? In the choir, in the orchestra, in the band you're you're gonna be with your people so that i found my people and then theater oh and that's a whole ah, other thing uh, yes. we'll, say, we'll save that for another yeah. episode and then well, that, you can talk about theater if you want to know, this, like, is your, was, this is your bit that man. was at, like when i started at 12 so i was like then that started then i had all the theater and then so i was all of that and then i started exploring <laughs> astrology and then <laughs> no no i'm just joking um ariel anything on your mind um yeah actually can you show me how a proper singer is supposed to stand? Oh, yeah. Oh, good. So, yeah. First, well, first of all, this is what I tell the students not to do, and I see it all the time. Posture. So <laughs> I will see them what this is first of what not to do. You have like your legs like really far apart. Oh gosh, no. Your pelvis is forward. <laughs> no, I see I see this and this is okay. because a lot of people don't even realize because think about it, if you're standing in line for like lunch, you're not thinking about like, No, you're my trying to like posture. ease the weight. So, so kind of I see that. Finger. I also finger. see a lot of <laughs> this. Oh greatness and stillness. And Kids I get, get it. Bored. And you know, and I get it. It is hard to be like, you have to have a calm body. 
Mm. And and that is and I think that's part of it is that a lot of times having a calm body is you only do that when you're taking a test or you're sick. So <laughs> like, and those aren't fun okay. things. No. So I think it's just and then also like just learning and teaching the body calm body. So we mm. also work on having about feet shoulder width apart. Yep. Um having the be- the bees. Wow. The knees we go. semi bent so that yeah. we're not going to have because uh, I tell them about this that there it it happens people will pass All out over. by doing that just with with everything. Right. Yeah. And then we also then talk about the when we breathe not moving our shoulders yes. that the breath is coming from here mm-hmm. and that we're filling it this way. Yep. And then I, you know, and then also because a lot of them don't even know that they're doing it. And I try to make, make it like it's a safe place. It's totally mm-hmm. fine that you're making mistakes. I make mistakes all the time throughout the day. I say wrong words. I say wrong things. I mess up on a rhythm. And I go, we're just here mm-hmm. to learn how to sing better. Yeah. And right. I'm here for that. And you're not the only one because everybody did it. It was, you know, <laughs> the big, oh, get a big breath. Oh, you gosh. know, you're not going to get a big breath and working on breathing exercises because you also do this in band class because I remember doing this for, uh, since I'm a wind player, working mm. on your breath support because mm-hmm. breath support for playing the clarinet flute is the same for, you know, for uh, singing. Mm-hmm. So then we worked on breathing like in for four, hold for two, yep. out for four on a, oh. or then yeah. you start going, yep. and then making sure that your neck is not getting mm-hmm. involved because what was then starting to happen is that you could see the neck was the thing that was doing it instead of the breath. Instead of. Yes. Oh, okay. And then you can see it because it's really hard to teach singing because yeah. we can't see what's happening in here. But you have all these other little things that you go, if this is happening, that's probably what's happening in mm. there. And then you can also hear it as yes. well. And you go, hmm, why can't we sing quite as high? Well, then what we're also doing is every time, and I learned this um, at Oregon State because I had, you know, for just tension, anytime you go high, you go low. And that kind of keeping your hands up like that. And especially when you start getting up to the rafters, because a lot of kids start go, you know, thinking yeah. that they need to squeak it and really right. push it. Right, right. Yep. When you are doing this, your body can't think about that. So then it li- it just, boom, it makes a lot And easier. it's kind of like that powerhouse that's your diaphragm yeah. is really, you know, it has to Where escape, else is it gonna it's gonna go. go. Yeah. yeah. And then it gets you to not think about, oh man, this is so high. Well, I can't sing that. I go, just do your best because it just, the more you do it, because I told them like, it's like working out. You have, it's a muscle. You have to train it. That's okay. If it's not trained yet, sure. that's why you're in choir. So yeah. we can yeah. train it so we can. And the more we do these vocal exercises, the more it's going to, the more range you're going to get. Yep. And then you can sing those higher notes and then you won't have tension and you won't have a sore throat, all of that stuff. You know, it is interesting that you bring that up because I got a lot of kids that go like, I don't get it, I'm lost, I don't know how to do that, and let's go, that's why it's school. That's yeah. why you don't learning. You don't come into school knowing stuff because that would not be school. That's, be- what, that's why I'm here to help you through. <laughs> and I, we're working on actually looking at music, being able to follow where I go, okay, we're starting at measure five. You know, mm. I'm not expecting kids to like be able to say like, oh, I knew exactly how to clap and count that, I and, know and I know those notes. <laughs> I'm not expecting that, but just knowing like we're re- we're using it also. It's literacy. We're reading, mm-hmm. and then also being able to follow along and knowing where we're at and understanding when are we resting, when are we doing mm. body percussion, and that that and looks yeah. a little different. How many kids in your choir? Uh, it varies, but let's see, maybe like ten or eleven. Nice. Oh, okay. That's great. You know, 10, oh, look. Because there's other stuff that's also happening, like really cool things like robotics. Like I'm not, yes. so obviously and some of them are like in my choir one day and then they're like, I want to do robotics, but that means I'm only in choir one day. I'm like, you go do that. That's an amazing opportunity. You go do that. What yeah. about robot choir? Robot choir, <laughs> yeah. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It'd be all auto-tuned, you know. It would be. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to talk about posture? Yeah. Um, Anything else so I was about? just going to say, like, a, a lot of times, uh, and it's so hard. It's these about thick the shoes on. I know. They're my clogs, actually, because they're kind of Is that hard. what those are? Yeah. yeah those you're not are. a tap dancer, are you? They're, I did at one point, but no, they're all Dancer, also, too! Uh, what don't you do? I got these during, uh, when I was in voice lessons in college, because it, my feet pronate, in which also these shoes help keep 
so my feet don't do that. Uh, so I was able uh, to get better breath and better grounding. And so that's why I wear these because I'm singing a lot and it just promotes better posture for me. Nice. Okay. Cool. So that's, nice. okay. that's also why I do it. And I also like to be taller. So. Well, great. Well, <laughs> so, well obviously yeah. you all can see that Taylor is an amazing teacher because not only did she just teach everybody on camera how to have a great posture, yeah. she just taught the two of us. Now, obviously <laughs> I'm a teacher too and Ariel has taught in the past. I don't, you teach outside of... Um, I've coached before, yes, okay. uh, acting wise, right. but uh, teach, no, I can kind of, if someone needs help with something, mm -hmm. I can definitely step in. But there are teachers normally, of all calibers, but yeah. not an official teaching position like a school or something. Mm -hmm. No, but no. Again, uh, Mr. That, that shout out to my mom, who's a retired preschool teacher. <laughs> yeah, preschool is hard, don't, uh, yeah. like anybody who teaches pre-K or middle school, like really, yeah. really appreciate you because. Is there definitely. the same? Uh, to, to some They're extent, just yes. Larger preschoolers. I would, I mean, They're right. Pre larger, smellier preschoolers. Yeah, the smelly part is uh, definitely spot on. Uh, Taylor, anything else, or Ariel, anything else on your mind? Anything else before we? Uh, I think we're almost out of time, but I don't think so. I feel very refreshed after standing up and having good well, posture. And, well, and we would have in, in the real world in that we would have actually done like a full, full breathing grounding. And what I've also, I, I just used this and tried this on Monday was to kind of ground them because that's right after school. Everybody's Ooh, jazz. Yeah, school. energy, energy, energy. Energy and to ground them instead of just saying, hey, please be quiet out. We did some breathing exercises just to calm everything down. And it worked. Hey. Obviously, you know, there's still a little, but it's like it really kind of got the wiggles out. It kind of got the focused breathing. And it's the breathing that we need to use anyways because we're going to be working on range and singing and, mm. you know, so doing all of that. Right. Taylor, really appreciate you being on the yeah. program. A great teacher, teaching students of all ages, including adults, mm -hmm. uh, working for the Douglas County Youth Symphony. Also Orchestra. working for the, that's what I said. <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> I was like, yes, remember Symphony would have uh, uh, all yes. the band instruments, we'll which we do not the have. They have strings. O, yeah. o for Oregon. Uh, the, the Youth Orchestra, the Douglas County, of course, on the board for the Douglas County Music Association, also teaching at which school again? Help me out here. Fur Grove. Fur Grove. And I need to come, I need to come see you. I need, I need to come see you to teach again because I really enjoyed watching you teach and watching your kids, and you guys did a great job. Job. Oh, and I forgot to say, Please. you know, how we you're saying like things come around while well, how I was in DCYO when like basically almost when it first started and now I'm teaching at it. Ooh. So I was, um, I didn't go to Fir Grove for uh, elementary school, but we were bused over because I went to a, a private school. Yeah. I was in the band program at Fir Grove in fifth and sixth grade. Oh. So it's just kind of interesting how I would have never suspected, you know, being 10 years old going, I'm going to be coming back here you know, 21 years later, and I'm going to be teaching in this room wow. music. I didn't so. I didn't find myself coming back here either. I left in 2006 to go see the world. I wasn't impressed. Went to the U of O, wasn't impressed again. Came back to came back to Douglas County, and, and here I am. Do you kind of have a sense of homecoming? Because you, this is you where kind I, of remember, like, this is I was where, a kid here. Yeah, well, and I, I was bo born and raised here, okay. was uh, born and raised, and then lived in the same house. All my life before nice. I went in, uh, went to Oregon State. Mm -hmm. So I've this is my like home. I've I've been here. Oh. I've been in musicals. I've been in yep. you know things. I all the music people here. We all know each other. They have all cool. seen me. Going wait, she's not twelve anymore. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. yes. happens. I know. Yeah, just because like that. I, we know we all kind of know each other, and mm -hmm. we've all kind of grown up, and we all kind of go. Uh, go in and out of each other's lives. I do have one Circle. final question, uh, and then we're gonna end the program because we're basically out of time. But Taylor, just for fun, I'm curious. Since you did grow up around here, where are your old stomping grounds? Where did you used to hang out with your chaps and allies? I'm curious, where were your hang spots? I'd like to know. I don't really have hang spots, I know. it's. Uh, I didn't have the, you know, what you are thinking of as the exciting high school time because I was busy with marching band and orchestra and after school dance, private voice lessons, private clarinet lessons, and obviously homework. When's that gonna yeah. happen? Yeah. Ah. So I didn't, I just basically, I did most of my stuff was either with a couple, you know, of like, like my girlfriends, you know, we would, you know, go over to each other's houses and kind of do stuff. I did things like honor band hey. and honor choir. Mm. So that's what I did for fun is ah. that I did a lot of other, oh, and band camp too. I went to band Dude, camp. Dude, band camp is the best. So <laughs> that's what I was doing. Cool. I was not getting into any other things. I was having a great time with my, with my musician friends. And then during the summer, doing the summer musicals at Jacoby. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Then I was just with my theater friends during the summer. See, that's cool. And that's that, a good balance. Yeah. So Taylor, a high academic, an outstanding musician, and a professional educator. Taylor Selling, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Yay. Well, that seems to be all the time we have left for today. Tune in next time for another exciting broadcast featuring Trevor Thompson, the band director at Joe Lane Middle School. Uh, once again, this broadcast is brought to you by... 10 Down Bowling and Splits Bar and Grill. The Gene Bechtel School for Music. Spider King Studios. And the Douglas County Music Association. We appreciate you tuning in today. I'm Colin Hurwitz. And I'm Ariel Hicks. And, and we'll see you, see you next time. time. Thanks. Thanks. Bye, Bye everyone. everyone.